Hey, I'm Dr. John Minichetti. I'm currently the president of the American Board of Law and Plantology, and I'm here with our series of interviews, and I'm very excited to be interviewing Dr. James Rakowski this evening. A little bit about Dr. Rakowski's background for the, the users that do not know about him. Uh, he, he earned his uh, bachelor's in science degree uh, from Duquesne University in, in, in pharmacy in 1972, and um, he became, got his doctorate in dental medicine at the University of Pittsburgh in 76, and then he went back and earned a PhD in pharmacology at Duquesne University in 2008. He's a diplomat of the American Board of Oral Implantology, and he's a fellow of the American Academy of Implant Dentistry. Uh, he's also our editor-in-chief of the Journal in Oral Implantology. Uh, he's past president of the American Board of Oral Implantology, and he has a wealth of clinical experience in implant placement, aesthetics, bone grafting, implant prosthodontics, and certainly pharmacology. Uh, he lectures uh, worldwide and maintains a practice currently uh, for over 31 years in Clarion, Pennsylvania. So welcome, Dr. Rakowski. Thank you, Dr. Minichetti. Thank you so much for the invitation to be here with you. It is a pleasure. Um, I think this is exciting that uh, you're doing these interviews for the ABOI and this will inspire many people, hopefully, to go on and become diplomates of the American Board of Oral Implantology. It's a, well, thank you for taking a, your time from your busy schedule. Oh, so I'm going to ask you a few questions and sure. uh, let me know your opinion, because everybody values your opinion. Um, with your background as an author and researcher, uh, can you tell us what you think uh, the ABOI slash ID diplomat credentials, how it helps to elevate the standards and advance the science of oral implantology? Um, the, 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 the credential shows to the individual that has it and to those that he's treating and to his colleagues that they have spent time in finding the evidence-based facts of implant dentistry. In other words, they didn't just take a weekend course but rather that they got into the literature, they looked at what does the research say? Where do we place implants? How far do we place implants uh, from the natural tooth? How close do we place implants to each other? What makes the difference in the longevity of that implant? It is not just a matter of taking and cutting the tissue, drilling a hole and putting it in, or even in today's world where we have guided surgery, look, let's just numb you up, put this on your teeth, drill some holes and screw it in. There is a lot more to it than that. And the research helps elevate the entire profession of implant dentistry because implant dentistry is the future. Thank you, Dr. Koski. So leading right into uh, research. So as our editor of the Journal of Oral Implantology, uh, can you share with our members how the journal has developed over the past decade or so since you've taken over its leadership and the importance of the existence to our APO diplomats and other dentists involved with implant dentistry? Uh, okay. Well, the, the Journal of Oral Implantology is the oldest U.S. implant journal of all the journals that uh, have a dedication to implant dentistry. JOI is the oldest of all of them. And I have to tip my hat to all of my predecessors, all of the editors that went before us, in that they did a, a, a fantastic job in positioning the journal as we moved into this new age of electronics that has made the journal workforce. Um, we, we have authors from all over the world submitting to us now. We manage all of the manuscripts in, an, in a completely electronic format where I can get them into me, I can take and I can see the worthiness of them, I can ship them out to reviewers. When I took over, we put them in an envelope and shipped them to a reviewer, a hard copy. Today, it's all done electronically. We can track who our reviewers are, what those reviewers, what those reviews are, how well a job they do in reviewing it. And reviewers are just as important as everything else as the author is. But also, we are now um, reference on the web of science. We are a referee journal with an impact factor. And, and having all of those things, that gives credibility to the JOI sponsoring organization, the American Academy of Implant Dentistry. And it makes us scientific based. It gives us a footing in saying, this is, we know this is what works. 
evidence-based, again, not to go back to that word again, but that's what the journal does. It brings evidence-based results to the clinician out in the field. And so it, it has contributed a great deal to our diplomates and it helps people prepare for their diplomate examination. Yeah, very, very important. Very important. Um, so quality research and peer review publications in implantology has been your passion. Um, Nowadays, you know, with social media blitz and the sharing of cases and the chatter that's going on out there, and it's what advice could you give our fellow implantologists as they are bombarded with all this dental information, particularly with dental implants? Yeah, uh, it, it is a tough. It is a tough the decision to make. What do I do and what do I not do? Who do I believe and who do I not believe? What is the truth? And know this. The truth will change. The truth as we knew it in 1998 is not the truth we know in 2021. And the truth today is not the truth that we will know in 2025. Things will always be changing. Things will always be evolving force. I, I encourage you to always, as, as clinicians, to seek the truth. And the truth is what will help the patients and will help you in your practices. That there is certainly a lot of commercial hype out there. And, and I am not being critical of um, commercial ventures because commercial ventures create jobs, uh, they fund research, they make things go forward for us and whatnot. But you also have to take a look and see where did that research come from when you're looking at a product? It, was it sponsored by the manufacturer or was it independent research? And we, and we certainly do need research sponsored by manufacturers, but I want you to look at every piece of research that you see with a critical eye. Who's winning by having this research out there? Is it your patients or is it just somebody trying to make a quick buck? And so look for the truth uh, and that's where it's at. And also be looking at how many times has somebody done something? Sure, we can all do something once, maybe twice, maybe three times, and it might work. But let's do it a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand times. Then we really do find out how well it works. And that's where the literature will come in and help support you for it. So look at all the avenues. Look at those commercial things that are out there. Listen to your friends. Go ahead and see the things that are on Facebook. They're there. They're valid for you. But do everything with a critical eye and critical thinking. Okay, so uh, Dr. Rakowski, as one of our past presidents of the American Board of Oral Implantology, what do you see as a benefit to a member or someone getting credentialed with our ABOI? Well, the, the biggest benefit is, is that it gives that individual confidence. By becoming a diplomate, you are saying to yourself and to your colleagues and to the public that you have been challenged. You have been questioned in a written format and orally uh, with cases that would be brought before you, as well as cases that you have done in your practice. And you have had to justify what you would do in these cases that are presented to you and justify what you have done in your practice. It, and then when you get that diplomate, it says to yourself, I am worthy. I am not just a dabbler in implant dentistry. This is a serious thing because when you prepare for that examination, you will work harder than you have for anything else in your life, in professional life. And it will mean just about more than anything else in your professional life. There's all the other things that are important for us. But Having this credential says to your colleagues and that patient in your chair that you have developed critical thinking skills. And when you're faced with a situation, what should I do? Well, you've got other diplomates, you've got colleagues that you can reach out to, but you also can have a confidence in yourself that this is a good decision that I'm making. And that's why one should become a diplomat. It that's is a awesome. full-time job. Very good. Very good description. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> it's so true how it builds confidence in the individuals. I've seen it throughout my years. Wonderful. Um, so being involved with dental education for so many years, uh, what advice can you give some ca a candidate uh, to help educate themselves 
to find the tracks to become qualified for ABOI credential? Well, I, I think the important thing is, is that it is a daily task before you. Uh, you you've got to do something every day to learn what the profession of implant dentistry has to offer out there. So one, you've got to read the journals, whether that be the Journal of Oral Implantology or other journals from other specialties, but read the journal. Try and maybe take 15 minutes or 20 minutes a day and just read one article. You will reach a point if you read articles daily where you can read an article and understand it reasonably well in 10 or 15 minutes. And that is something that will become just a routine for you. It's just like, you know, you get up and you, you make the coffee in the morning and you exercise and you, you go to work, you, you sit down and you spend 15, 20 minutes reading an article from a journal. That is one thing on a daily basis. Number two, you've got to go to courses and where those courses be continuums, uh, which are comprehensive and, and, and buying many things together for us. Uh, or whether they be individual courses put on by private uh, learning institutions, but you have to take courses. And when you go to those courses, it's not just a matter of getting the ticket punched and getting the eight hours, but it's absorbing what is that lecturer trying to put across. It's asking some questions, participating in that class. And while you are at that class thing, you interact with the other individuals, participants in that, in that uh, course with you. Also, you've got to go to um, annual meetings like the American Academy of Implant Dentistry annual meeting and district meetings and, and spend time in the courses, actually in the lecture hall, listening to what's going on there, but then spend time in conversation with your colleagues in meaningful conversations. So we've got to have the camaraderie, the social, <laughs> but we have got to make sure you're having that discussion and then develop relationships where when people... Um, when, when, when you have a good day, you want to have a colleague that you can call and he doesn't see you as bragging when you say, I did this case and this is how I did it and it turned out beautifully. That's good. Someone's got to listen to it and you've got to return the favor and listen to others. But just as importantly, when you're having a tough day, you call somebody or they can reach out to you. That's why you got two hands. When you reach out to help somebody else and when you stick out for someone to pull you up when you're down. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a daily thing. It's meetings, it's CE, quality CE, it's reading the literature. That'll get you on the path to become a credential member. Awesome advice. So um, also as a renowned educator, uh, what educational programs or pathways do you envision that will be developed uh, as we move towards the future to help achieve proper education experience for individuals to get to the level of board certification with the ABOI? Well, the, the sponsoring organization for the ABOI is the American Academy of Implant Dentistry. And the American Academy of Implant Dentistry now is putting a great deal of time and energy resources into the supporting residency programs at major universities. Uh, and these residency programs, uh, they, at the beginning, they may say art where they can be done on a part-time basis and then evolving into a full-time basis. And the American Academy of Implant Dentistry is also putting forth with um, various universities, a master of arts degree and a master of science degree where you can actually get an MA in implantology or an MS in implantology. And it'll just be a matter of depending on how much uh, hands-on work one does in those programs. But both of those programs will be able to be done while the person is still in their clinical practice and they can do this on a part-time basis, the MA or the MS program. So many exciting things. There's also going to be through the AEID MAXI courses and private courses, the, the ability to do hands-on surgery is improving each year in the United States, because states are allowing people to get temporary licenses for educational purposes. And then also there's the opportunities to uh, perform surgeries out of the country. So there's many ways which people can get advanced education because it takes advanced education to become a diplomate of the ABOI. It is not your basic couple of weekend courses and let's go in and sit down and take this test. That'll get you failure, but immersing yourself in good quality education will get you the credential. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's, it's really, it's exciting to hear about these new developments that uh, I've been hearing some buzz about. So thank you so much for sharing that. 
Um, yeah, with all your accomplishments, we're going to finish up with this uh, in research and implant dentistry. How has achieving the ABOI board certification affected you positively in your practice and professional career? Well, it, um, it's kept me motivated. It's kept me from having burnout. Um, I've been in clinical practice for 44 years. Uh, I just recently did retire from clinical practice, um, but it, it kept me from getting burned out. Uh, it kept me alive. It kept me interested and it kept my confidence level up so that when I did have that case that I, that I found challenging, um, that I, I just accepted that challenge and would rise to that challenge. And it wouldn't be something that I would cower under with, but in other words, I would look forward to it. But it, it, I also found that it enabled me to improve my skills every single day and every single year. And I saw that cases that maybe I wouldn't tackle when I was uh, younger, that at middle age I would, and then in my later years that I would really invite. So it personally, it just gives you that feeling of, yes, I do have worth and value in implant dentistry. Awesome. All right. Very good. I'm so glad. Well, Dr. Kasky, thank you so much for sharing all your time this evening with us in this interview. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of listeners out there. So uh, stick on social media. They're going to want to reach out to you for more questions. Thank you okay. so much. I, I for all to... you do for the Academy, for all you do for implant dentistry, for all you do for so many colleagues that you've touched over the years. I want to personally thank you so much. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. My heart goes out to everybody. Thank you. Thank you.